This week on ANN, we're celebrating Thanksgiving here in the United States, and we want to share some of the things we are grateful for. Today, we will look back at the amazing things our members, pastors, healthcare providers, and humanitarians have done to help their communities. And we will share some special words of gratitude from some of our Adventist World Church leaders. These stories and more coming up. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, this week in the United States, we are celebrating Thanksgiving. This is a time for us to pause, take stock of all of our blessings, and give thanks to God for everything He has done throughout the past year. We understand that right now there is so much continuing pain in the world due to the COVID-19 pandemic, social unrest, and economic insecurity. However, we also believe that God has richly blessed us and led us throughout the past year. So this week, instead of a normal episode of ANN video, we are going to share what we have been grateful for throughout the past year. Adventist pastors, teachers, young people, communicators, and especially our members have worked tirelessly to share Jesus with their communities. They have used so many creative ways to reach those around them, despite necessary social distancing and masking requirements. And we wanted to share with our viewers how God's word has spread in the face of trials. Before we get started, here is a special message from Adventist World Church President Ted N.C. Wilson. Happy Thanksgiving to every one of you. God is using you in mighty ways to touch the lives of so many people. By God's grace, heaven is happy with your outreach activities, and we are thankful for God working through you. Thank you to each of you as our employees and as Seventh-day Adventist members worldwide. What a privilege to serve God in a very special way in these very uncertain times, especially during the pandemic and the challenges of the future. But we are in God's hands. We can be thankful for what God will do, and we can be thankful that He will carry us through to the end. I'm sharing this from the island of Mindoro in the Philippines. And what a blessing God has given to us with evangelism, with baptisms, with uh, outpouring of God's Spirit on His people. What a blessing. I am thankful for that. God be with each one of you during this Thanksgiving period, and we're thankful for your service and dedication to God. Happy Thanksgiving. If you've been watching ANN video, you have probably seen numerous stories about how the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, or ADRA, has worked tirelessly to help people throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. During the COVID-19 pandemic throughout 2020, ADRA partnered with the Adventist Church to help more than 35 million people. Here are just a few things ADRA has done to help the communities they operate in throughout the pandemic. During the height of the COVID-19 pandemic in India, the death toll raising to hundreds of thousands of new cases every day. The country's healthcare system is unable to keep up with the surge of new cases. Hospitals reported severe shortages of oxygen supplies, beds, and personal protective equipment for health workers. ADRA airlifted critical medical supplies and several oxygen generation systems to ease India's coronavirus health crisis. In December of 2020, ADRA shipped more than a million dollars in medical supplies to help LAU Medical Center Risk Hospital and St. George Hospital University Medical Center in Beirut, Lebanon. ADRA donated 50 pallets of medical supplies containing thousands of PPEs, gloves, face shields, surgical devices, and essential life-saving equipment to help LAU Medical Center Risk Hospital and St. George Hospital University Medical Center provided quality care to the most vulnerable communities. In the Philippines, ADRA is providing life-changing and united support against COVID-19. From September 1st, 2021 through May 1st, 2022, ADRA will implement a response program to COVID-19. Among many other projects in the country, ADRA has provided psychological first aid services to medical frontline workers and vulnerable community through the Stronger Together and Embrace COVID-19 projects across the Philippines. To help promote the psychological well-being of the people of Mindanao, ADRA intends to build the capacity of local volunteers in conducting PFA and making necessary referrals to appropriate health authorities. 
To learn more about the many projects ADRA has started throughout the world, please visit ADRA.org. After you hear all of the ways ADRA is helping around the world, I'm sure Adventists everywhere want to know, how can I help? ADRA has a way you can help them with their projects. Every year, Giving Tuesday is celebrated on the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. This year, Giving Tuesday will be on November 30, and ADRA is matching your donation. That's right. If you give $1 to ADRA now, ADRA will match that dollar with three. That means your $15 donation will be $45. And if you're struggling with what to give, you can check out ADRA's gift catalog that is full of ideas that will truly help people in need. ADRA sent this report. Today, you can make a difference. For someone like Rafif, or Paula, or Juana, for entire communities affected by wildfire, or hurricane, or the devastating COVID-19 pandemic. Today, you can unleash the power of giving to transform a hurting world. Right now, every $1 becomes $3. Whatever you can give will be multiplied to help the most vulnerable among us. We've endured so much together. So let's rise up together. The work that is being done by ADRA and other humanitarian agencies around the world could not be done without the tireless effort of those who work to care for their communities. This week, we have a special message from ADRA International President Michael Kruger for our Adventist Humanitarians. As the President of the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, I am blessed to lead this ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I give thanks daily for how the Lord continues to guide the life-saving work of ADRA. But during this season of thankfulness, I reflect even more deeply on our many blessings. In 2020, during a global pandemic, ADRA changed the lives of nearly 35 million people around the world. You may think, but that's not possible. We are told in Matthew 19, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. This year, there are so many reasons to give thanks. I give thanks to God for revealing His holy presence in the work of ADRA and the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I give thanks that by God's grace, we continue to serve as the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Educators around the world have been working tirelessly through the pandemic to ensure that children receive physical, mental, and spiritual support. For some, the COVID pandemic has been a way to turn a bad situation into good. The Solomon Islands Mission Education Department took the opportunity to visit rural schools while in Fiji, teachers from Suva Adventist College visited their sister school, Navusau Adventist High School, with groceries to support the teachers and their families. In South Korea, teachers at Tusco School prepared and taught a total of 647 online classes. They also provided opportunities for students to recognize their hidden talents, develop their skills, and discover their strengths through different clubs, especially adjusted to students' needs and interests, including aerobics, piano, guitar, clarinet, table tennis, and English. And in the U.S. state of Wisconsin, students from Adventist Christian Fellowship at the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, encouraged, motivated, and inspired students to remain faithful to Jesus. They continued to meet three times a week for fellowship and Bible study. Joshua Guerrero, ACF advisor coordinator, says, I believe God used this unprecedented year to open our eyes and to turn what seemed like an evil situation into good to reveal to us how to truly start a gospel multiplying movement on campus, impacting people personally. And now we have a special message for teachers from the Director of Education for the Seventh-day Adventist World Church, Lisa Beardsley Hardy. I'm Lisa Beardsley Hardy, Director of Education at the General Conference World Headquarters, and I'm sending greetings from the Adventist University of Central Africa and the Adventist School of Medicine of East Central Africa Division in Kigali, Rwanda. I would like to thank the 113,640 teachers and professors around the world in Seventh-day Adventist education at every level, primary, secondary, tertiary, and even postgraduate education. Thank you for what you have been doing throughout the pandemic. 
persevering, finding new ways of teaching online by means of Zoom, even by using WhatsApp and email. Thank you so much for furthering the mission of educating for eternity throughout the pandemic. God bless you. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, our frontline healthcare workers have continuously put their own health on the line to provide life-saving care and treatment for the seriously ill, even while receiving little in return. The Southern Asia Pacific Division hosted the Adventist Health Professional Summit, bringing together various professionals for fellowship, prayer, and recognition. Medical professionals from 14 countries attended the virtual summit held in late September 2021. COVID frontliners shared testimonies of working with patients and representatives from other institutions also shared testimonies of how God has worked through them to touch lives over the past year. In the U.S., Advent Health Global Missions utilizes senior leaders who volunteer their time and expertise. The mission has prompted healthcare teams to volunteer on medical mission trips at 10 locations in Rwanda and Peru performing more than 50 surgeries in Juliaca, including general surgery, reconstructive burn surgery, and surgery to repair birth defects like cleft palate and cleft lip. They've also provided personal protective equipment and ventilators to medical clinics. This work has continued amid the pandemic when hospitals have been overwhelmed with cases. In Argentina, the Adventist Sanatorium of Plata is carrying out advanced work on developing more tests for the disease in collaboration with the Adventist University of Plata, who provided necessary equipment for diagnostic procedures. This testing will help the country do more for people infected, as well as help prevent the spread of the disease. Now we have a message of gratitude from Health Ministries Director, Dr. Peter Landis. We're nearing the second Thanksgiving since the pandemic began, and we give thanks for God's many blessings but we give thanks for you, the health worker, the health professional, for all you have done during this pandemic, putting your own lives on the line, working at the bedside, working at the coalface, risking everything. Thank you for doing that. You have made the difference. And you know what really, really touches my heart is that there are those of us, those of our team, those of our health worker cadre who have paid the ultimate price. They have served, they have made the difference, and many live because of that. But as we come to another Thanksgiving, we thank God for his goodness, his constancy, his faithfulness. And amongst all our blessings, we thank God for each of you, health workers dedicated in serving him and serving mankind. God bless you all. Coming up, we have more special greetings from Adventist World Church leaders around the world. But up next, our pastors and local church members have looked for ways to get involved in their communities during COVID-19. We have a special tribute for them. We may look, pray, read, think, worship, sing, and share differently, but we all look forward to the Sabbath, and we all look forward to the future when Jesus will come again. With this message in mind, we arrived at a core component for a new identity system, the creation grid, a simple seven column structure for layout. The grid is a reference both to the prophetic timeline as well as to the creation week that culminated in the seventh day Sabbath. Regardless of what or where you are designing, you can always find information to help you communicate that we are all Seventh-day Adventists. Welcome back. Over the past 18 months, Seventh-day Adventist pastors and church leaders have faced unprecedented challenges in the face of COVID-19, widespread lockdowns, and other tragedies. Despite constant setbacks, disappointments, and cancellations, pastors and ministerial directors around the world have seen more creativity in ministry during the second wave of the pandemic. From Zoom church services to starting food pantries, distributing care packages, training church members, making physical improvements to church buildings, upgrade church technology, producing new apps, creating engaging online content, and hosting drive-in church services. 
pastors have been resilient and flexible and have adapted quickly. Within a week or two of lockdown starting, church services were streamed online. The emotional roller coaster of openings and closings as the pandemic continues, as well as increasing controversy surrounding the vaccine, have proved difficult. However, and pastors have been challenged as they lead the flock. Ministerial Association Secretary Jerry Page has a few words of encouragement for our ministry leaders. Hi, pastors, pastors' families, elders, deacons and deaconesses, leaders around the world for our church that are touching lives and ministering to people all the time. We just want to say thank you to you today. Thank you for all you're doing for Jesus, for the way you're having such an impact. We know it's been a difficult time with the crisis and the COVID and conflicts in different ways around the world. We're praying for you. We thank you for the great job you're doing in the midst of, of the challenges. And I just want to give you a word of encouragement today, too. As Jesus said in Revelation 22, 12, he said, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to their work. Now, we know we don't earn salvation because of our works. We don't uh, even earn God's favor. But Jesus has said a number of times that we are going to be receiving rewards according to our works. And Ellen White said about this text in Revelation, every good deed done by the people of God as the fruit of their faith will have its corresponding reward. So thank God for what you're doing. You're not doing it for that reason, but God is gonna reward you in so many different ways now and in eternity. Jesus is coming soon. And I think about that song that says, what a day that will be when our Jesus we will see. And he takes us by the hand, leads us through the promised land. What a day, what a glorious day that will be. Let's be faithful, let's be there. Jesus has promised to complete the work he began in us. God bless you all. Adventist youth around the world have not allowed COVID restrictions to stop them from sharing God's love with those in their communities. In the South Philippine Union Conference, young people organized 275 simultaneous evangelistic series, both in-person and virtual, resulting in over 3,800 baptisms. Pathfinders and youth groups in El Salvador collaborated with the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, or ADRA, to distribute 105 packages of brand new clothes and blankets to displaced individuals following devastating landslides. In addition, they provided 400 breakfast meals and bottled water to National Red Cross volunteers, additional rescue teams, workers, volunteers, and the shelter staff. Youth Director for the Seventh-day Adventist World Church, Gary Blanchard, shared this message with Adventist young people. Hi, young people around the world. I'm Pastor Gary, and I'm so thankful for all of our youth around the world, for all the wonderful things that they are allowing God to do through them. Just recently, I heard about the 1000 Missionary Movement and how they're involved in taking the Three Angels message into all the world. Many of these uh, 1000 Missionary Movement missionaries are getting involved with public campus ministries and going and reaching the, our young people, the future leaders of the world in secular universities around the world. So we're so proud of our young people. We're proud of our young people around the world who are getting involved in Voice of Youth. Seventh-day Adventist young people are holding evangelistic meetings and preaching the Three Angels message and seeing thousands of people coming to Christ. It's so exciting. We also hear of places in Europe where our young people are learning how to effectively attract other young people to their churches through i and other outreach ministries. So I got to say, we're so proud of our young people. God bless you, and we give God glory for you. Blessings. Communicators have been busy this year, too. In this digital age, sharing the gospel has become easier than ever before. Through social media, Christians are able to evangelize all over the world. Recently, the church launched an app, Adventist Teams, for digital missionaries to create, share, and distribute hope in Jesus. The Adventist Church in Puerto Rico released its first major evangelistic film, Spin. The second season of the Uncertainty Project was released, the result of the joint work of different countries, media entities, and five worldwide administrative offices of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Inter-European Division, Trans-European Division, North American Division, Inter-American Division. Two churches in the U.S. Lake Union region of the Adventist Church created a digital animation evangelism project, and Adventist communication experts from different Adventist churches entities around the world 
work together to share messages of hope through a series of 12 hashtag Dear Coronavirus videos shown globally on social media and viewing platforms. Coming up, Ashley Chisholm is here for This Week in Adventist History. But up next, Adventist Mission shares a very special message from the country of Iraq. Hi, Vio. How are you? Are you okay? Dear Vio, I can't even remember how long we've been staying at home now because of this virus. For now, <laughs> it's just nice to hear your voice and see your face. Nothing beats playing outside in the dirt, though. Which reminds me. Are your hands clean? Yeah! Mommy and Daddy says not a lot of kids get COVID-19. But it's always nice to be extra safe. We should wash our hands before picking our nose. <laughs> with the water. Washing our hands protects us. But it also keeps us from spreading the virus. In case we touch something dirty. Let's always be clean and safe, okay? Love, Joey. Welcome back. Erbil, Iraq has a history that spans more than 5,000 years and has a deep connection with biblical history. President of the Middle East and North African Union, Rick McEdward, visited the citadel in the heart of the city and shares how it reminds him of how God wants us to treat others. Adventist Mission has more. I'm in the citadel of Erbil, Iraq. This citadel has history spanning more than 5,000 years. This uh, rich history of uh, this particular place goes back to the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Greeks, the Romans, all the way up through the Ottomans and of course now this large Kurdish area. This particular citadel is, has deep connections with Bible history. You think about all these different empires, the, the wars that were fought and all of the things that were done. This place is one of the longest civilized places in the world. And uh, I'd like to show you just a little bit of the pieces of this place. As I'm here in the Erbil Citadel, I'm reminded of all those important biblical uh, time periods, very significant throughout the Bible. The Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Persians, which are more centered in Iran, but also have this territory, and uh, even the Greeks and the Romans. Not to forget, though, the Kurds, the Medes of the Medo-Persian Empire, uh, their descendants are the Kurds, which are here in this area today. So the, the Kurds see a direct connection with the, the Medo-Persian Empire. It's interesting that all of the biblical prophets from the Old Testament, they all referred really to somehow this territory as Israel was diminishing in its importance. It was not following the Lord. There was these confrontations with Babylon and Assyria, um, and then Daniel serving and the Babylon and then the Medo-Persian Empire. All of these stories are somehow right around us in this part of the world. If you look at the essence of those prophecies, those prophets, there was some main concerns of them. One is that people should follow God and that really the prophets were confronting um, God's people that they should repent, turn, toward, turn towards Him and follow Him. Second is that they should not have false gods in their lives. And the third, they should be fair, kind and just to other people. Social welfare was extremely important to God in these prophets. I think we can take that advice seriously for ourselves. We can be humble and repentant. We can get rid of all the false gods out of our lives. And we can look at others and be kind, generous, and just 
so that we can be God's representatives in this world. Would you join me in this? Be God's representative today. Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org. Then click on videos at the top. And finally, for today's episode, let's turn to Ashley Chisholm for a look at Adventist history. This week, we hear about how Adventists throughout history have recognized Thanksgiving. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. Here in the United States, we celebrate Thanksgiving on the fourth Thursday of November, which happens to be on November 25th this year. Adventists in the past also celebrated Thanksgiving, typically by giving money to support mission work throughout the entire world, but also with family meals. In fact, they promoted having simple Thanksgiving dinners in line with the church's health message. In the November 22nd, 1906 issue of the Review, Frank O. Raymond shared a potential Thanksgiving menu, which included cream of corn soup, stuffed potatoes, baked beans, beet salad, and large quantities of pumpkin pie. The review also promoted Anna L. Colcord's A Friend in the Kitchen and Edward Fulton's The Vegetarian Cookbook, the covers of which you see here. Colcord's A Friend in the Kitchen, or What to Cook and How to Cook It, was first published in 1899 by the Pacific Press Publishing Company and was reissued in 1908 by the Review and Herald Publishing Association. Anna L. Colcord, seen here in her author's photo from 1908, was born Anna Guise on March 7, 1864, in the U.S. state of California, and in 1882, she married Willard A. Colcord. Soon after, the Colcords became Seventh-day Adventists, and they spent the years 1893 to 1902 in Australia, where Anna ran their growing household. Two of their children were born in Australia, and she wrote short articles and poetry while composing her slim volume on what to cook and how to cook it. Her cookbook even includes a recipe for what Adventists commonly call communion bread. If you're making any recipes this week, whether for a regular meal or a simple Thanksgiving feast, take a moment to chew on the thought that your favorite family recipe might just have originally come from Anna Colcord's book and therefore from Adventist history. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in depth, and plenty other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Click the subscribe button to make sure you're caught up each week. And remember, leave a comment or a prayer request. We have people who are praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. The passage says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care. <laughs>